All right, so I have all of my WordPress configuration filled out and I'm actually using a fairly strong password, I think, uh, but for some reason it's not registering that. Anyways, I've got all this out. I think you might wanna discourage search engines if you don't intend to use this. So I'm gonna do that. If you do intend to use it as a blog, then, you know, uncheck it. Next, I'll go ahead and install this. And so the idea here is I wanna make sure that I can actually log into my WordPress instance. If I'm not able to log in, then I probably have something else going on with my cluster that's not working out correctly. So I've got my node balancer in here. This thing should be working. It looks like it is. I've got three up. That's, that's the correct IP address that I have in here. Um, next up is gonna be our volumes. Just need to make sure that I have a correct volume. We could always compare that to the stateful set one as well. Uh, but what I've got here is it looks like it, it logged in. So let's go ahead and log in now and I'll log in with WordPress and that ridiculous password that I have. And let's just see if I can log in. Great, everything's looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new post. And I just wanna just test this out, right? Wanna make sure everything's working. So we'll say hello world and we'll hit publish. Okay, so we'll copy that IP address and take a look. Hello world, great. Okay, so I'm actually able to get in and I think everything's working. But what I wanna do is go back into kubectl and get deployments. I actually want to get my pods. I want to delete this pod. So this is the instance that WordPress is running. So kubectl delete that word or kubectl delete pod that WordPress pod. And so this will actually take down the site most likely, or at least give me some sort of downtime, just a small amount of downtime, but downtime nonetheless. So let me log in again or at least try to log in again, what do you know? It's working. So let me provision, let's say, three more replicas of this deployment. So kubectl and apply-f WordPress slash, and we've got that. And then kubectl, we'll go ahead and get our pods again. And if we just wanna see our deployment itself, it would be our app equaling to WordPress app, and there's our three pods that are related to that, and all three of them are running. If I refresh in here, it makes me log out again, and this might this will probably be true across the board, mostly because of how WordPress is designed. It doesn't work with load balancing by default, at least the configuration I have. In other words, I can't have a bunch of different instances of WordPress running without additional configuration while the service itself is actually load balancing across these three deployments, right? So that nuance is something that, that we're just not gonna get into. We don't have time at this point, uh, but if you are interested in it, let me know in the comments. Maybe we can do a repeat where it's more advanced WordPress deployments. Uh, but so really we just have one replica here along with just one database. That clustering and the load balancing stuff gets a little bit complicated for some of these older tools. MySQL is a little bit older WordPress is a little bit older. They weren't designed for Kubernetes, and this is a good example of that, right? Good example of, of that working in action. But we do have the ability to create data, save data, and if for some reason the WordPress container fails, the Kubernetes deployment will kick in and bring it back up for us. And if we have to, we could always deploy multiple versions of it, which in terms of reviewing the content doesn't actually matter. It's more about editing it and being logged in, right? So for the for example, if I come into the blog post page, all of these might be multiple deployments. In fact, you probably noticed that the bar went away, the WordPress admin bar went away because these are multiple deployments that are actually running. So in a sense that that part's kind of cool, but the, the, it falls apart a little bit when we try to go into the WordPress admin again and literally almost every time it might require us to log in, which is definitely not what we wanna do. Because if I refresh in here, it's gonna make me log in again. That's not what I want. Uh, but overall, it is working and it's working correctly. And that also means that, it should mean that we have access to that MySQL database. So the last thing that I wanna do is actually just check that I can log into MySQL from another pod or some other container, just a very minimal container that will have the same config map as we need to access that MySQL data, which will give you foundation for 
doing other things with this internal communication inside of Kubernetes. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at creating another pod, a Ubuntu pod, so we can just kind of test our connection to these things within our cluster. So to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new pod YAML. I'll call this pod client.yaml, just as a way to distinguish itself a little bit. So first and foremost, this is a API v1 kind of pod. The metadata name is just gonna be Ubuntu. And then a few other things that aren't that surprising as far as the configuration, hopefully at this point especially. And then from here, we also wanna bring in our environment variables from WordPress CN. So realistically, the only one I need is probably this to test that it's working, but I actually want all of these to use a MySQL client so we can actually use the MySQL commands to run this. So in order for this to continuously run as a pod, we have to implement a new command, and this is gonna be bin slash sh dash c, and then while true, do sleep one, and then done. So uh, we don't need that final colon, semicolon, but the idea here is this will just continuously run in a loop just so it's up and running. It doesn't, if we don't do this, it will just turn on and then turn right off, which is not what we want. We want it to continuously run. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this with kubectl apply dash f and kubectl get pods. There's our pod, it's gonna be creating. So kubectl ex uh, execute, and we wanna do the interactive shell, and I'll go into bin slash bash. Okay, so that happened actually pretty fast. I was able to get it. Config map, again, we should be able to echo these things out. So if I do echo dollar sign that WordPress DB local, I've got it. So typically speaking, if you try to use MySQL from a, just a plain image, a plain Ubuntu image, it's not gonna work. So we actually want to install the MySQL client. It's actually really easy to do. So we'll do app get update and then app get and install MySQL dash client. I'll hit enter. This will ask me if I want to add anything to this and I'll go ahead and say yes in just a moment. Um, do keep in mind that this is a pod and it is a container, therefore ephemeral, meaning if I delete this pod or container, this won't work anymore. We'll have to reinstall everything. So at this point, I can now type out my SQL and it says it can't connect to this. This is not, not surprising whatsoever. So what we're gonna do instead is use a lot of these config map variables to connect. The first one is gonna be mysql dash h dollar sign, the host, then dash u dollar sign, the user, and then dash p to be prompted for the password, which we will then go ahead and copy and paste in there. What do you know? I can now use the mysql commands to do everything that I might need to do, like show databases, for example. What do you know? There's our WordPress database. And I can go ahead and use that one with use WordPress. Cool. Then I can go ahead and do um, describe WordPress posts. This is one of the tables in there. This will have all those fields that we have. So we can actually get the post title. So I can do select post title from WordPress posts and hit enter. And what do you know? Those are all of those post titles that are in there for our WordPress installation, which we could verify. Uh, granted, if we go in here, we see only two of these. These other ones might be blog pages and perhaps that's what the difference is, yeah? So it's stored in a certain way and of course we could navigate and investigate a little bit more. But just generally speaking, the idea here is more that our random pod can access that same database. This is one of the downsides of how these config maps work or even secrets. So even if it was a secret value and the values weren't exposed here, the actual pod itself would have those values regardless of if it's config map or secret. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind when you start doing stuff like this. Uh, but generally speaking, we now have a way to access our WordPress directly also to access it through, uh, basically through a service, but more in this case, just the database. And the last thing we're gonna do is take a look at port forwarding so I can access that MySQL database again 
but of course through my local machine. So on my local machine, if I do MySQL dash dash version, I should see something here. If you don't, just install the client on there so you can actually run through things. I used Homebrew to install this client, but the idea is we can use kubectl to do something called port forwarding. And if you do dash H, you can see a bunch of examples of port forwarding. You can use it for a deployment, you can use it for a service, a pod. There's a lot of different ways on how you could go about doing it. Now, the idea of forwarding your WordPress port, it may or may not work correctly. So keep that in mind when you try to port forward something like WordPress, just because of all the configuration that goes in it. But MySQL, on the other hand, we definitely can use. So we're gonna do this in two ways. We could do it in two ways, but I'm gonna do it in one main way. And that is by using the service itself. But again, you could use the deployment as well, but might as well use the service because we've got it. So we've got kubectl and port forward, and we want to grab service slash, and then it's going to be MySQL DB. We can also declare the namespace of default if for some reason you use a different namespace. Then we want the port mapping. So in this case, it's going to be our local port mapped to our forwarded port. So my local port, I'm going to use 3206, the non-standard port, and I'm going to map it to the standard port. The only reason I'm doing that is because on my local machine, I might actually be using the standard MySQL port for another project, or you might be. So if I hit enter for this, I spelled port forward incorrectly. So let's try that again with the correct value, port forward, not forward. Okay, and so there we go. We've got a host value and a port value being mapped to this you know, service on my Kubernetes cluster. So to do this, I do MySQL, the host value again, and in this case, it's 127001, just like that. Then my user is lowercase u, still the config map user, which is root. And then I want to pass in the, the um, actual password itself, which will be p. But before I do that, I'm also gonna do dash dash port, and there's gonna be 3206. And we hit enter, it's asking me for the password, example password, we hit enter and what do you know? There it is again. So if I do show databases again, I should see WordPress, use WordPress and there it is. And then I can select, you know, post title from WordPress posts and hit enter and what do you know? There's all that data again. This time though, it's coming from my local machine through this port forwarding which can be incredibly useful, especially if you're wanting to do any sort of analysis on these things, this would be a good way to do that. Um, now, if you are doing analysis on a production database, it's probably a good idea to just make a duplicate or a point in time copy of that database and then do the analysis. Uh, that way you're not overloading your systems. But generally speaking, port forwarding can be really, really useful for testing all sorts of things or connecting with actual production data. Uh, which is really, really nice. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you got a lot out of this one. Now, if you're anything like me, you know that you get asked every once in a while to deploy blogs or help your friends or family to deploy blogs. And to me, this is a very practical way to do that. We can repeat this process pretty easily and allow our friends and family to sort of self-manage their own WordPress installation. Now, of course, there are some advanced things that you might consider looking into, and that is creating a Kubernetes job so that you can actually back up that database on a regular basis. Of course, you could always opt for managed databases as well, but at least getting the skill down of backing up databases is probably a good idea that you might want to have. And you could do that within just Kubernetes itself, which is pretty cool. So if you have any questions, if you have any recommendations for the next series, please let me know. Look forward to seeing you guys next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care.